Hey everyone, it's Christian here, and I'm going to try and fade the road noise here. It'll come and go, so I'm going to try and talk around it, because I'm right next to the main road here in Pine Island. And the palm that I have sitting in front of us is the, the mule palm, which is actually a hybrid between the pindo palm, Butea capitata, which is right there, and queen palm, which is, let me zoom in over there, you guys probably are familiar with it by now, but or not it's going to be those two to the left of that there's a foxtail and the two to the left are right there i think they're right there so there there's the queen and so what you get is a let's zoom out here sidewalk you get this very fast growing coconut looking ish uh hybrid and it is an interesting it is one of the first palms that really that that got a, a commercial success uh, that is a hybrid so the um, the cross between the two is relatively easy to do if you know what you're doing um, at first it was considered you know a, a trade secret but then someone started doing it and was offering free seeds and uh, I think just to kind of show everyone that it wasn't a big deal and uh, there was a big uh, controversy but now that mule palms they used to be about $75 a gallon now they're about $20 a gallon or so uh, depending you know maybe a little bit more if you're buying depending on where you're buying them and what what state in Florida they're a little bit cheaper because they grow a little bit faster but I would say that this palm here is a, is probably twice as old as this one here so the, the good parts about the mule is that they grow very fast and they're very cold hardy they're as cold hardy probably as this pindo so we're talking about 15 degrees or so maybe a little bit less so they'll grow pretty much anywhere in Florida. Um, I would say, yeah, all peninsular Florida and maybe up into Tallahassee shouldn't be a problem all across the Gulf Coast, along the coast, uh, maybe outside, you know, Houston um, and all over Southern California. They're a good grower that has a coconut look to them in Southern California and they grow really fast. Uh, they have nice tropical broad leaflets and uh, they just, you know, this one's being grown as a double here. So this is actually two palms. This is probably only six years old. This is probably 12 years old. Maybe a little bit, maybe like eight, eight to 10 years old, but it could be 12. So um, the other good part about a mule is that if you don't want to deal with seeds, it does not seed. The fact that it's called a mule palm, meaning that it does not produce its own seed, it does not have male and female flowers. You can, however, back cross it and make a what's called an F2 hybrid, where you have the hybrid cross with either, again, with either a queen palm or a pindo palm, so a Cyagris or a butea, or you can cross it with another genus called Jubea, the Chilean wine palm. And that's called a, a tri generic hybrid. I'll say that again because of the cars, a tri generic hybrid. So I'm trying to speak as closely into the camera as I can. Uh, so the, let's go over the cons of, uh, of growing a mule. Now, with the genetics of a, of a hybrid, you're gonna get the vigor and the, uh, the cold hardiness. But the downside is, is that it seems to not be as uh, hardy to dealing with uh, a lot of the natural uh, pests that we have here in Florida. It seems to have a problem with Fusarium wilt. Gannon Derma, it, it, it seems to really fall down real fast to it if it's anywhere nearby. So you might want to test your soil for that before you get one. But they are, uh, they, yeah, they, they just tend to kind of get a little bit of everything. I, I don't know, but genetically they don't have what it takes to uh, really go out of domestication into the wild, so to speak. But uh, that's kind of back to what I mean is that you know, they, they're not going to, you have to kind of really take good maintenance, take care of them as far as uh, uh, preventative maintenance, you know, uh, any kind of uh, bud rot, although it doesn't really have a bud rot issue, but uh, trying to make sure that, you know, you don't get these viruses or these diseases that uh, affect this palm much more so than you would any normal palm. But with that said, they're really fast growing. They're, the, the, another downside is when they get really tall, I wish I could have had a, had a picture of an old one. An older one is going to, uh, not be as pretty as the younger ones in my opinion that's just my opinion though they can get they can be very pretty or they can be very ugly. uh but i my opinion is biased because i live where i see palms every day uh the old ones are not the best looking ones compared to other stuff that i see but if you you know if you don't have many options in your climate uh i think that you know it's gonna be this can be this one of the prettier palms i think it's prettier than say a washingtonia 
I think it's prettier than maybe even a Butia. But uh, but if those are the only options in, in your area, then this is, you know, a third prettier, faster option. So another thing is when you live in those climates, you may not have the issues that I have down here with Ganoderma, with Fusarium wilt. Uh, so you may not have to worry about that. They tend to grow very fast and, very, you know, they don't really need well-draining soil. This is a pretty swampy area, actually. Not swampy, but the, the water does not drain well here um, when it rains they tend to be happy with it and grow very fast. They have this, this fibrous, uh, this fibrous uh, growing along the petioles and it's not armed, but it has this, the fiber becomes kind of rougher towards the petiole and it has this brownish, this kind of copper colored uh, side of the petiole, which kind of goes out when you get further beyond the leaf. So uh, with that said, I will leave you guys here with that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get up, get away from the main road and I uh, hope you enjoy this vlog. As you know, there will be more coming. I'm gonna do some more technical stuff, uh, you know, in person with the, with the tripod working where I'm gonna actually be in the vlog myself. I think that these vlogs are done better when I'm showing you the plant. You don't need to see me unless I need to show something for size. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Go ahead and subscribe if you're new to the channel and you'll see many more uh, many more of these vlogs to come and I will see you guys later.